things like you guys are doing with your with your with such a fantastic job with uh, with the internet and doing your own website and, and, and communicating that way. I think is the, is the way forward for the future of hairdressing. Hi, so I'm Nick Irwin, the European Creative Director for TG. Uh, here we are in Holland at the InCrowd event, which um, the guys here at TG have, have put on. Today, we, we, um, it's a great honour to be here, back in Holland. It's one of my favourite countries to visit. People are always fantastic, and the, the hairdressing industry is very, very powerful here. Is, is it interesting to tell something about the Catwalk session show? When I got given the opportunity within, T, within the, the creative team, the marketing department came to me and said, look, you know, what would be our ultimate seven products, six or seven products. I used to be a session worker before I, I joined Anthony as, as the creative director. I worked tirelessly with our R&D, you know, um, development department within, in um, research and development department within Unilever. Worked really closely, testing literally thousands and thousands of different ingredients and products to come up with what I felt a session stylist, me or whoever it is who does photographic work, would need to complete these hairstyles. So we came up with um, seven different uh, products in session series. Um, so from a marketing point of view, and for you guys in the salons, I think it's, it's you know, fashion, and I'll talk about this when I'm doing my haircut, but fashion is so easy to access now because we're all digitally, you know, well, most of us are digitally uh, turned on now to using the internet and et cetera, et cetera. For me, I think the days where, the, you know, we were the ones that were going out telling people about fashion is gone. People are already seeing it. What we need to do is have the tools, the, the things that are being used backstage at all the shows around the world and say, hey, this is exactly the spray that gives you that particular look. Today's about being really informal. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's up close and personal, you know, if you like, or, or it's unplugged. So today's really about really connecting with you and it's a kickoff. It's, a kick it's, the, it's the start of many ones to come. Do you want me to talk a little bit about this yet? Just a wrap. Okay. Okay, this is the new collection, DIY. Um, we've kind of made it sort of in a little cardboard box. The whole concept was really um, do it yourself, I think, can stress a lot of hairdressers out because they think we're telling people to do their own hair. Our collections are always based around the subculture, which are probably people that will buy bedhead products, the younger, the younger generation, um, or where we've aimed at products in the past. Spending time in, in the east part of London, which is kind of where all the new ideas happen, and all the new, the new music, the new fashion, etc., etc. We started to see people look in a certain particular way. This, the colouring was really big again in terms of doing really crazy colour, making the hair pink, dip dyeing, yellow, adding bits of blue. But the whole vibe of it looked like it had been done at home. It was like, a, and, and reminded me a little bit of the early 80s when I first started hairdressing, when everybody's really experimenting, perming and bleaching and shaving bits, and, but with a, a slight more refined way of looking at it. So I'm very, I'm very proud of this. It's been a real labor of love because we had to turn it around really quickly and get it ready for a couple of big shows that we've just done. Yeah, anyway, let me talk a little bit about what I'm gonna do first. Um, the, the, the guys have got me a beautiful young girl, as you can see. Um, DIY is something which I think, you know, the book's been passed around. Certain parts of it you'll think, no way can I do any of that. It's all the yellow or the blue or whatever. But I think, you know, for, like I said, you know, Anthony's always stuck by this and I think it's part, it's part of our ethos. We have, to, we have to grab what's going on. We have to be seen to be doing it. If we don't, somebody else will. And I think, you know, to keep in tune with what people are doing, then you've got to, you know, you've got to always embrace it. Even if it's not necessarily something that you do all the time, I think it's just you know tapping into it and having an understanding of it. This particular cut I'm going to do is the one I do from the collection. It's a, well, it's a variation because um, it hasn't really got a lot of length in the back. As you can see, she's got a fairly standard, um, nice haircut, but you know I'm going to make it look a bit more rebellious, a bit more rebel, and, and a bit more kind of rock and roll. What we've done is we've pre-coloured the hair. Jean-Paul, my colourist for the day, has done a brilliant job. Um, is really to pinpoint where I'm gonna work with my sectioning. The idea is to work from starting at the front, shorter through the, uh, from the recession line, but keeping a little bit of length here. So we've almost got this kind of longer side, side sort of side piece, side panel, 
and that's where that stripe of colour is. It's like, it, we were talking about it in the collection, it's like a, a graffiti artist when they tag something, they put their stamp on it, it's just, it's like, this is what literally some of the girls have been doing, you'll see there's that one chunk of colour, or a piece of colour that's grown out, um, and it's inspired us to kind of just, you know, put these kind of erratic pieces of colour in the hair that might not necessarily be a colour that you would wear on a, on a, a daily or weekly basis. The great thing about this is you can strip it out right away if you don't like it. And I think that's really the key, the key to these looks. Um, so eliminating all the weight underneath, first of all, keeping the outline you know, a bit softer. I'm going to work a C curvature. So work, it looks like I'm working quite high, but she's got a lot of hair. So I'm going to work from the recession line to the tip of the crown. And then just coming through, I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to disconnect that panel of hair as we come through. Being around the man himself, Anthony, all these years, I've been with him 20, 22 years I've worked for him, 23, 23 next year, this year. Um, he's amazing because, you know, he's, he's somebody that you all, you know, I know most of you have met him. Um, he still carries on like he's a 15 year old guy. He's still got that energy as, as, he, as he probably did when he was a teenager. Um, but he has, he has a, he's very infectious and has a, a great understanding of, of progression. Inspiration can come from many different medias and different avenues. For us as a creative team, it's about embracing all the different cultures. You know, we've got, you know, Akos is Hungarian, we've got a girl from Australia, we've got Italians, we've got a Japanese boy again. So for me, the best bit of advice to, to get into is everything that you see, even if you don't like the look of that, even if you don't know why you, why you like it, take a picture of it and then start to make a storyboard or a collage or, or start to put it together. And all of a sudden, you'll get this framework of an idea or a collection. I and mean, before you know it you're, doing it, you're doing DIY or you're doing a new set of pictures for catwalk. Or you're doing, and that's literally how we do it. It's that, it's that straightforward. I'm gonna start here because this is where obviously we've, we've put this great piece of color through the front. And again, it really, I, I love this because it works beautifully with, the, with the, that kind of pale icy blonde that we've bleached the hair through. And then I'm just going to just create my line, deep point cutting through the edges. 